You are listening to Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. Listeners west of the Rockies can call Art toll-free by dialing 1-800-618-8255. If you're east of the Rockies, the toll-free number is 800-825-5033. If you've never called Art before, you may use the first-time caller line at area code 702-727-1222. And the wild card line is area code 702-727-1295. When you get through, let it ring, and Art will answer your call in order on the air. This is the CBC Radio Network. desert and the great American Southwest. I bid you good morning and welcome to one of the strangest, unusual talk shows in the world. (laughs) From the Tahitian and Hawaiian Island chains, eastward over this great land and covering every bit of it, to the Caribbean and the U.S. Virgin Islands, down to South America, North to the pole worldwide on the internet. This is Coast to Coast AM, and I'm Art Bell. Good morning. It is good to be here. And we are going to do an update to a story we did, I don't know, we'll ask. I think it was about a year ago, maybe more. All about a young man near Kansas City, Missouri, little town near Kansas City, I think, who um, built a. Uh, I don't know what it was exactly. We'll have him tell you. A time machine? Maybe. A dimensional portal machine? Maybe. A human french fry mis- machine? Very possibly. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting story. His name is Mike Markham. Actually, I've affectionately, mind you, nicknamed him Madman Markham. And he is back to give us a report on what has been going on. It's good just to hear his voice, actually. Just let me get a couple of things straight. Uh, this fax just came in, dear Art, on the news tonight at 11 p.m. on KEPT TV channel 12. Uh, there, there was a report of a fireball over eastern Oregon, Portland included. That is from Janet, and I wonder if anybody up there uh, saw, saw a fireball. Now, this will answer a question, dear Art. I'm confused. Friday, you and Richard Hoagland agreed he'd be on Thursday night, Friday morning. Then last night you said Hoagland would be on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, which is correct. Please announce it again this evening. Thanks. Answer is, he'll be on tomorrow night. All right, Richard Hoagland tomorrow night. Because, of course, on Friday morning, uh, I'm going to um, be leaving at 3 in the morning, Pacific time, a little early, so I can get to the airport. But I'm going to stay on the air right up until the very last moment. So, we're going to have Richard here tomorrow night. Pass the word, Richard Hoagland tomorrow night. That's serious stuff. And he's got some serious stuff for you, and we obviously didn't get into it properly because of the uh, uh, Centennial Park bombing. We've got the latest for you on that and all the rest of things, but we're, we're going to go and up, update a story first. Um, this is Mike Markham, otherwise known as Madman Markham. That's affectionate, uh, as you know, Mike. Um, what is the newspaper there, your newspaper? Uh, the St. Joe News Press. Okay, well, I got... Kansas City Star. A Kansas City Star. I got an article, I think it was the Kansas City Star, as a matter of fact, about you. And we're just going to try and update the audience uh, a little bit. The article simply said that you had you had tried to build some kind of machine and had taken, borrowed, appropriated, actually stolen some power company transformers to get the voltage uh, to accomplish your task. And that apparently was your undoing. And we'll get to what the machine was, but the way I got it, 
they they you got arrested for stealing the transformers and you went to jail did your time as a matter of fact the last time we had you on the program your parole officer called and uh, we uh had, my arresting officer he was your arresting officer that's right yeah. sorry arresting officer it's been a oh, how long has it been a year uh about 16 months sick wow yeah, I, I think it was last months. april all right uh, anyway, he called and begged you, um, in more ways than one, to stop this madness, to uh, return to being a normal person, get it. Well, I guess you had a job, or maybe you didn't have a job then. Um, I'm losing track of it all. At any rate, um, he didn't want you to continue. Now, tell the people what it is that you made. You got the. You, you, what were you trying to make? What had you done? You first, you built a little scale model of what's called a Jacob's ladder. Right? Yeah. And a Jacob's Ladder is a very high-voltage, low-current thing that drives a up the... Yeah, it's just a climbing arc. Climbing arc, yeah. And at some point, in your when you had built this scale model, you had taken... What was it? A screw? Yeah. Metal screw? Yeah, it was a metal screw. And you threw it through the arc or through the, the field... And that sucker disappeared, psh, gone. Yeah. Right? And then, what, reappeared? Yeah, about two feet away. About two feet away, but it just flat disappeared. I mean, it was gone somewhere. Yeah. Through this little machine you had... How big was the, the little one that you built? Uh, well, it was, it was a 20,000 volt spark at about 100 milliamps, so... Um, the, 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 that's the, the transformer itself was stuck in a five gallon bucket of oil, so. Oh, I see. And in the laser, uh, it wasn't, uh, that was a little bit bigger when I started. But it wasn't really, like, really big. So. Okay, well, anyway, the little one, how big was it physically? How tall was it? Uh, well, basically, for the electrodes, I just used straight and clothes hangers. Uh huh, so it was about as tall as a straight and clothes hanger. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good size, actually. Um, okay, so obviously at this point you figured, hmm, anomaly. Uh, it's impossible this screw would disappear. It might get scorched, but it wouldn't disappear. So your next idea was to build a Magungus model of the same thing, right? Yeah, like a giant version. This one so big that it, it what, you had to put it on the back porch? Uh, yeah. Because uh, basically I had to hook it straight to the fuse box, the, the line coming in. Well, well, we'll get to that in a moment. But, I mean, how big were the electrodes on this one? Uh, I used these 3 8 inch, three eight inch thick metal rods that were about, uh, about 6 feet long. 6 feet long. Yeah. Now, that's getting pretty big. Yeah. Okay. So, then you decided, but and obviously for something this big you need a lot more power. Yeah. So... Your next move was to try and figure out where you could get. You needed high voltage, right? Yep. And the way I recall it, you needed transformers to to step up the the regular voltage that comes to your house. Yeah. The main. Did you go? By the way, did you straight go straight to the mains of your house? Uh, well, I used two 400 amp breakers in the middle of that because those top and 200 amp breakers were pretty easy. So. <laughs> Wow. It popped, it popped to 400, so I had to go get another one. It popped a 400 amp breaker? Yep. Oh, my. All right. How much voltage? Well, okay. Uh, first of all, where did you go to get the transformers? Uh, at the time, I was living in Stanbury. And King, uh, Stanbury is a small town, and King City is about roughly the same size, and it's about 12 miles away down the road, yep. down uh, one, Route 169. I got it from the, the, the substation to that town. So the transformers seemed to be gathering useless dust. Yeah, they were just sitting outside the fence. Uh huh. Just sitting there. Yeah. Just sort of saying, Michael, here I am. Here we are. Actually, how many were there? Uh, there were, uh, six. Six. And, um, after they begged you to liberate them, and you liberated them, how many were there left? Uh, well, I got, I got all that. That was outside the fence. I'll fix them. You got six of them? Yeah. That might have been slightly gluttonous. Did you need six? Um, 
Well, I was, I was planning on doing the, each one of these. Like I was going to get try to get as much boards as I possibly could. And each one of these cut out about uh, twelve thousand four hundred seventy volts. So I was going to like hook them together like batteries and get higher voltage. In other words, you were going to hook the secondary of one to the primary of the next. Uh, no, I wasn't going to stair step them like that because they probably explode then. But he has a good point. Yeah, they sure but might. No, what I did was I paralleled the primary coil and and series the secondary. Ah, okay. Uh, so you you liberated the transformers. Now, those things must be off. How heavy are they? Uh, the uh, twenty-five kilowatts or about three hundred fifty pounds. So I take it you took a truck, right? Yeah. How the hell do you lift them up? Uh, I had to had a couple guys that paid them to help me. You paid them to help you. Yeah. Okay, so so they were um, unwitting dupes. Um. Paid, but unwitting. In other words, they were not considered, or were well, they? Well, they didn't. Basically, I didn't tell them they were still in these things. So that when the police uh, got to you, they didn't get in trouble. Uh, well, actually, they did. They did. Yeah, but they, I'm, I don't know. I haven't talked to them since then because I'm sure they're probably still mad at me. But did you pay them? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. But uh, I'm sure they're still mad at me. But I think they, they got a lot less than I did. I think they just got a couple years probation. Well, couple years probation. What did they? Uh, uh, hmm, let's see. How can I put this? Um, what did you tell them that you were doing? I mean, did you tell them this is going to be I know, know five, fi- five I finger discount, or or did you say we're we're? Uh, well, I, uh, actually, what I told them was uh, I went ahead and bought these things from St. Joe Light Tower. Oh well, then see, they should have gotten off. Well, seems like, huh? Yeah, it seems that way, but. All right, so anyway. I think the way the cops are looking at it, saying, uh, well, you guys, you guys are idiots for believing this guy, so. Because, uh. Ignorance is no excuse for. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, basically, there's like a lot of building factors, because I've already tried buying those off St. Joe Light Power, and they're pretty, they're pretty, still pretty mad at me, too, so. They are? Uh, yeah, I'm surprised they even give me electricity, but. I would think after all this time, you know, they would be forgiving. Mm. But, but no. Uh, well, anyway, uh, so you got the transformers, you hooked them up to this gigantic, um, gigantic Jacob's ladder, six feet tall, and you th- did what? You just go throw a switch or hit uh, a break? I watched her, uh, hooked everything up, I just turned the breakers on. You turned the breakers on. Uh, what happened at that moment? Um, well, I got like a pretty good sized spark. Um, let's see, Un- unwittingly, it been the southern half of Stanbury. Well, that was very unfortunate. Uh, the entire southern half of the town dimmed down. Yeah. Brown out. How far down do you think that you took the voltage? Did they ever tell you? Uh, uh, based, uh, I'm just taking a guess, uh, based on, like, the size of, basically on the size of the power grid, I drained probably down to uh, anywhere from 80 to 90 volts. <laughs> Oh, they have 110. That's, oh, that's very bad. Yeah. <laughs> very bad. Um, so this naturally got the attention of the authorities uh, with a big portion of the town going down. And they, I guess, began to investigate. How'd they get on to you, by the way? How'd they catch you? Um, basically, uh, a friend of mine was, uh, like, shooting birds with a BB gun, and he shot up in a, one of my next-door neighbor's sliding glass door windows, and, that, and he was standing on my front porch when he did that. So... That got so, snooping. So, in other words, in other words, uh, the cops came for that incident, and they saw in your backyard and saw this thing on your porch. Well, this was they, he shot from the front porch. He didn't go in, but what, see, what, basically, what happened was uh, the, the guy that uh, was shooting with the he, uh, after that happened a few hours later. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the next door neighbor called the cops because she discovered holes in her window. And then, you know, he said, uh... Did she blame it on your apparatus? Uh, no. Basically, there were other witnesses saying this guy shot, uh, shot a BB gun off my front porch, so the cop came and asked for the BB gun. And I went and got it for him. And any, anyhow, the, basically, the guy that shot the BB gun, he got in trouble for it. So, uh, basically, uh, he blames me for getting in the, I, I'm assuming he got, I get, he blamed me for getting in trouble, so what he did... Uh, he goes and t- he goes and tells the cops that hey he's got the- he's got all these transformers and they're stolen. 
So. Oh, it was a get-even deal, huh? Uh, yeah. So the cops. I didn't know that at the time, but I think I'm pretty sure it's what happened. Now, well, so what did the cops do? Just come and knock on the door? Uh, okay, that, this was all happened. Okay. Or did they stand outside with a bull, bullhorn saying, "You're surrounded, Markham"? Um, uh, okay. Uh, Basically, the the incident with the BB gun happened about, uh, if I remember right, about two o'clock. This was on a Sunday. It happened around two. Then the guy, come, the cop, comes and asks for the BB gun about six. Then eleven o'clock that night, they come in. They just walk right in with a search warrant. So. Walk right in, huh? Yeah, oh, because, the uh, door was open. They just opened and came right in. Yeah. Oh man, surprise, surprise. Yeah, I woke. Uh, I woke. Uh, basically, it was pretty cold, uh, so I was like sleeping right in front of the stove. And I wake up and I'm surrounded by eight cops. Eight, uh, eight cops. A rude awakening. So uh, that was uh, that was your undoing. Um, then you went to court and you had to serve. You did serve your time, right? Yeah. Which was how long? Uh, Sixty days. Two day, two months. No, no fun in the pokey. Um, was it miserable? Um, actually, it wasn't. It wasn't too bad because, like, uh, well, what, basically, what happened? What happened was originally I was going to keep this whole thing in like a secret just for me and a couple of friends. Of course. And uh, well, after I was arrested, I was pretty sure I was going to go to prison. So what I said was, I was going to go ahead and. Uh, because at the time I thought they had some sort of uh, like time machine apparatus or whatever, and I went and said, "Well, maybe I'll, if I go ahead and tell these guys I'm making a time machine, they'll think I'm crazy and stick me in the loony bin instead." So I went ahead and told them that, and uh, they ended uh, basically the sheriff gets his word of it. He tells all the newspapers, and the news all the newspaper puts it on AP wire, then before you know it, everybody knows. Yeah, and that's probably when we got in touch with you about then. Huh? Yeah, and. Uh, we don't know that it was not a time machine. I mean, you don't know where that screw went, do you? Uh, no. I'm no. Just, that's, uh, that's the first theory that popped in my head, and that's the only thing I can really think of. Mm-hmm. Now, the larger model, how many times did you get a chance to experiment with the the big mama uh, before they got you? Uh, actually, I didn't even get to try it once, because with the, the original, my original one, uh, my laser basically caught fire. Oh, that's right. Now tell everybody, where does the laser come into this? Um, originally, I was making a real fancy Jacob's ladder. Like most people have their strobe lights and lava lamps. Well, I have other, like Tesla coils, Jacob's ladders, and stuff like that. Right. Um, basically, I was making, uh, I was trying to make uh, like a Jacob's ladder that had like a perfect arc. Like it reached the top every time. Yeah. Before it started arcing at the bottom again. But anyhow, I was like trying to adjust it. And if I just move it like a, a fraction of a millimeter, it either the spark could either stick to the bottom or what not arc. So you mean you mean moving the uh, the, the probes or the poles from yeah, each other? The yeah, electrodes. Back and forth electrodes, yeah. Yeah, so anyhow, I, just, I, got, uh, I decided to use the heat from a laser to get the, basically get the spark going. Oh, to ignite the spark? Yeah. Uh, the heat from the laser providing... Uh, yeah, basically uh, it lowers the resistance of the air. And provides a path? Yeah. Check. Um... So you were in the middle of all this, and you were getting ready for the... How close were you to the great, grand, big experiment? Um, well, I got I set up the... Um, un, unfortunately, I only got to hook up one transformer. Uh-huh. Because when you hook those things backwards, they're not very efficient. No. No, no. And, of course, you, you load down the local system incredibly. Yeah, and if I hooked up all six, I'd probably overload the one on the pole. Uh huh. Maybe blown it up. Yeah. So I'm just I'm, I'm curious, and I always have been curious, and I don't think I asked you this last time. But had you gotten the big one hooked up? I uh, got the Jacob's ladder section done. No, no, I, no, no, no. Wait, wait here's my question. Had you actually finished it and got it working? You know, with the spark going all the way evenly to the top, what would you have done? Uh, with the big model? Yeah. Uh, I dropped up the laser and see if it worked. I was saying, hey, this is cool. I probably got, and basically, re- basically rebuild my laser better to where it wouldn't catch fire. Uh, heck, I'd probably get it on tape and go from there. I know, but what I mean is you threw a screw through the little model. Yeah. So what would you do with, what would you have done with the big model? Uh, if I get, the, if I got the same results, uh, basically I'd have seen, uh, 
uh, basically, I was going to see what which which to do if it was like sending it like send it into the future farther, or if it would like uh, make the. Well, I mean, what would you have thrown through? A screw first? Uh, yeah, just a bigger one. And then maybe a cat, and then you get the idea. We'll be back. Madman Markham is here. All right, now, back to Madman. By the way, uh, Madman, uh, I'm curious. Since we did that program, and I started calling you very affectionately, Madman Markham, uh, did that stick? Do people call you that? Uh, I don't know called me, did. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's... Nobody it's, around here tells me that, though. That's good. They, I mean, probably not your face. Uh, no. All right. All right. So, anyway, you never did get to do the big one you would like to have. Uh, and as I said, I'm sure you would have thrown something through it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, at what point would you have thrown a bi biological entity through it? Let's say, let's just say that your experiment worked and the screw disappeared. That's what I do. I throw a screw through first, I think. Yeah. Um, then I would throw maybe something bigger like a hammer through. Well, I don't know about a hammer. But, you know, something bigger. Yeah. And then, at some point, you would have to put a biological entity through it. Right? Yeah. What would have been your choice? Uh, uh, probably something like some sort of insect. Well, like a cat, bug, grass, like a cockroach, grasshopper, something like that. Something like that. Low, low on the level. Yeah. And then slowly edge your way up. Yeah. And then eventually... I suppose, if all, all of these creatures seem to survive, well, what if they didn't come back? Uh, hmm. I don't know. I'd be probably thinking, well, maybe, because I think with my small version, I think what I did was I sent it like a, uh, roughly half a second in the future, and then I caught up with it. That's why I'm, I don't know. That's why I'm thinking. And that's the reason it reappeared on the table. Now, if they don't ever reappear, I'm thinking. I'd be thinking, well, it either went, like, really far ahead, and I'd be waiting forever to catch up with it, or the uh, heck, it could have been vaporized. The uh, heck, it might have appeared in another universe or something. Like, I don't know. Yeah, these would be the questions, all right. Yeah. And so you would then have to ask yourself, you know, back then, everybody who was listening, me included, figured that you were going to walk through it. Now, after we did the program with you, it's like, your phone was disconnected after a while. Nobody had heard from you. People were calling me and saying, what happened to Madman? And we could only speculate. We thought you might have built your machine and walked through. Obviously not. No. Yet. Never got to that point. Yet. Now, you are, you are once again, you said there are new developments. You, 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 you have... Uh, well, basically, it's an, I've improved it since then. You improved it. Yeah. Now, instead of, basically, instead of lasers, I use, a, like, a revolving magnetic field. See, basically, I figured out what, what kind of, like, what I did. It's uh, basically a vortex of electrical energy. Now, you're going to use, wait a minute, a revolving uh, a, a magnetic field? Yeah, basically, it's a, uh, basically, it's a circle of uh, electromagnets. Basically, 24 around, uh, it's a, Okay, it's seven circles stacked one on top of the other, and each circle there's 24 electromagnets. Wow! Really? Yeah. And you power... It's probably, this one's a little bit more, getting a little bit more complicated. Oh, no, original. this is really cool. Now, you, um, did you wind these yourself? Uh, yeah. You did? Yeah. And how much voltage do you intend to apply to the, um, I individual, uh, magnets? Uh, it's, uh, uh, well, basically I've been using 5,000 volts DC. 5,000 volts. Yeah. Basically, I need, like, the strongest mag. Well, basically, I need the strongest magnetic field I can get. I've got you. I've and, got uh, you. You, you, well, you can't like, well, if you got high voltage, you won't need much current then, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and you say this is going to be revolving. Now, by that, do you mean an actual mechanical revolving, or do you mean uh, an uh, Basically, uh, uh, this is not it's getting tough to explain. We had a fax machine. But well, no, that's right. It will it be an electrical. In other words, do you move the field by uh, alternately um, 
basically it's kind of like a, you know, like the, the distributor cap in a yeah in a car. It's yeah. similar to that. Okay. Uh, basically, it, 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 uh, all in each circle, all of them are energized except for maybe one or two of them. There's basically there. I got I'm going to set it up to where there's four different uh, configurations. All right. So you, you you now you really may be making a time machine. Now this is pretty cool. Uh, have you got that part of it built? Uh, the electromagnets. Yeah. yeah. You do. Yeah. Okay. Now. We've got to get to the power question, because probably your arresting officer is listening. Okay? Yeah, hot power. And, and he needs to know how you're going to get your power, uh, because he'll leave you alone once he hears. Well, lucky, lucky for me, uh, I got a, like a, basically a real cheap generator. This guy more or less almost gave it to me. They almost gave it. Somebody gave it to you. Well, almost. he sold it to me like for 300 bucks, so... How big a generator? Uh, 15 kilowatt. Oh, that's a big generator. Yeah. That's a big one. And you can get, what, 440 primary out of that? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Now, transformers. You need to get the voltage high, right, for the generator? Uh, yeah, I've got that made, too. You do? Yeah. Basically, heck, heck I've had How? Since I was last one, so I had, well, I've had some help quite a bit, actually. How big a transformer do you have? Oh, it's well, it's, they're quite large, but I got several of them because uh, basically the, the total voltage I'm getting out of is three million. So. Oh, Michael. Yeah. Three million volts. Yeah, that's uh, the, basically the, that's all the generator runs to, entirely the entirely oh, that trans yeah. those transformers. Three million volts, and then you've got the uh, rotating. Yeah, because I got the. Oh, God. I got six of them. Each one changed 40, uh, 440 to 500,000, but the current's like really tiny. That's <laughs> uh, so th there has been, since the broadcast and the publicity, there have been people, obviously, I mean, for you to get this massive stuff built, there have been people helping you. Yeah. God, this is really interesting. What, when, when do you answer, so, so, anyway, the arresting officer, what was his name? Uh, Tom Hampton. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Does he uh, still talk to you, by the way? Uh, last time I heard from him was uh, 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 when he called when he called your show. That was it, huh? Yeah. I'll bet he's listening. I know he's on shift about this time. Um, anyway, you're completely independent of the power company. Well, I still use the power company to run the electromagnets, but. But you can do that legally. Yeah, uh, basically. Without, without without dimming down the town. Well, uh, yeah, only the, the electromagnets only use about eight kilowatts, so it's about the same as electric stove, maybe a tiny bit more. But right. Uh, you know, you are getting very close now to the technolo technology described in the Philadelphia experiment. Do you realize that? Uh, they used some sort of radio transmitter, didn't they? They used um, yes, they used, but but they used rotating magnetic fields and RF. The only difference was they used uh, had RF fields as well. Yeah. But you're you're getting very close to what they were doing. And how close are you now to the first big experiment? Um, well, that's another thing too. Um, my electrodes are a little bit different. Um, this uh, basically it's no longer a Jacob's ladder. Okay. Um, one. Uh, one of them, basically one of the electrodes is just like a uh, uh, just like a like a straight piece of, like a rod down the middle, yeah. and the other one is like a uh, like a it's basically a screen mesh with a that's uh, in a tube and it's around that and with a, like uh, basically the electromagnets around that. Uh -huh. so. And then you're going to apply three million volts to that. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. When when do you think you might be getting around to this? I mean, are, are we days, weeks, months away? Uh, uh, it's kind of hard to tell now. Basically, um, I haven't got. Uh, let's see, I haven't got all my. Basically, I'm right in the middle of it right now. I started last week, so. Um, are people talking to you about this? I mean, um, are you getting any any advice? Uh, people uh well basically the let's see the people at the technical college and stuff they think uh 
uh, they think I'm I'm a dead man. So. So do a lot of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the, on that three million volts, there's uh, it's only three million three milliamps, but at that voltage, it's more than enough to do you in. So. Oh, uh, like a French fried potato. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you would just be a massive charcoal, you know, and pretty loose, dusty charcoal at that. There would be very little left. Now, that's if, of course, if it has, it doesn't, it doesn't work as designed. Um, let me ask you this. Where did you get this radically different design for your new machine? Um. Uh. Basically, uh, uh, I talked to this, uh, I talked to this, uh, physicist, uh, uh, where's the heck, I can't even remember the town he was in, it was, geez, that was, heck, it was just like a month after I was last on your show. Right. But, uh, anyhow, it's like a, basically, it's, uh, basically he said, well, there's this, uh, I don't know if you knew about this or not, but there's this theory, it's like, it's, uh, uh, how'd it go, how'd that state theory go on? Uh, basically, what it boils down to, uh, at the vortex of high electrical energy, yeah. uh, basically, theoretically, you can form a hole in the fabric of the universe, and through that hole, theoretically, you can go through time. So, that's what I'm thinking. I understand. I understand. Now, in my original experiment where I used a laser, I think the way, I, the way that happened was that laser was pretty hot, and I never really realized this until just about three months ago. Um it was like the laser was really hot, but and it was, this was on my back porch, and this was like in the dead of winter in December. Yeah. And it was about 15 degrees outside. Uh huh. So I was thinking maybe the heat from the laser in the cold air, like act like made some sort of like tornado. Right. Yeah. Um, and and so the elect how how tall how big is the machine physically going to be, the new uh, one? Oh, this one. Yeah. Uh. Oh, uh, gee. Well, let's see, the electromagnets, they're about, oh, uh, if, if you like from the outer edge to the outer edge, they're about 10 feet in diameter. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're big ones. Yeah, they sure are. Holy mackerel. Now, are you are you in an apartment or a house? Uh, I'm in an apartment, but I don't, I don't have that stuff here. Also, we've got a secret laboratory. Uh, well, more or less, it's just, uh, basically just, uh, just a rented garage. A rented garage? Yeah. Believe me, lots of Sony Corporation began in a rented garage. Did you know that? Uh, For five hundred dollars, they began Sony in a rented garage. Anyway, so so you now have a dedicated building for for your experiment. Yeah. Well, uh, basically, I got roommates here, and they're scared to death of my experiments. So they didn't want, they didn't want to have it there in the apartment. No, well, I, I can't say I blame them actually. But well, even, even with, well, they only want my pentagraph generators or my tesla coils, anything like that in here either. Really? <laughs> yeah. For, so, now it, that's it, that's it beginning to get a little pushy. Yeah. I mean, your tesla coils. Well, the tesla coils I got are quite large. Oh. They're not just the, the, these ain't the little handheld pipe. These are uh um uh, uh, yeah, they draw about five thousand watts. So. Well, you don't do anything in a small way, do you? I don't know. It's just, I, I start small and get bigger as I go along. Yeah, but I mean, this is a massive change. What you're talking about now? These magnets, ten feet inside. How how about the grid uh, that you're putting up? How tall is that going to be? Uh, let's see. It's about uh, I'd say it's about six feet. Tall enough for a man to walk through. Well, the if you uh, basically this thing's like lying flat because these things are like really heavy. Yeah. I mean, okay, I told you there, there was uh, seven uh, circles. Each circle had twenty-four electromagnets. Yes, sir. Well, ba uh, basically, those are just well, I use JB Well to hold them together because I can't pick this thing up. Each one, each individual electromagnet weighs about two hundred pounds. Good lord. Yeah, that's why basically caused the me the laminated core because iron's pretty well, plate plate metal's pretty heavy when you get it. That much. Oh, you you have increased your your plans uh, exponentially. Yeah. Holy mackerel! Well, this is just I'm just basically I'm just making a kind of making a small one to see if it works because eventually I'm going to make one bigger than that. Bigger than that? Uh, well, that's another thing too. Uh, since your show, this guy in uh, Spring, uh, Springfield, Oregon, yeah, uh, like got hold of me. Yeah. 
and uh, he's working. There's evidently there's uh, four other people that's been doing experiments connected to mine. Uh, uh, one's uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, John Searle. He's in Amish. Have you heard of him? I've heard the name somewhere. Yes. Yeah. He, uh, he's, he's in London, England, and it just so happens uh, he's made like some sort of special generator. It just uh, basically runs on free energy. Uh, well, I'm familiar with these people, yes. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's what that could definitely come in handy for me. Because ultimately what I'd like to do is like build like a really giant one. Yeah. Uh, basically, if it's a small one, I'm going to see what controls what. Like uh, if the current controls, like how far I go into the future or the past or whatever. Yeah. And what, what I can do to like make it go in reverse. And, go into the past? Yeah. And then figure out a way how the heck to, how the heck to control that. Maybe it will depend on the uh, phase of the uh, of the electrical current or the the way the magnets are rotating. Who knows? Yeah. Any of that's possible. Um, ultimately, though, if if the experiment goes as you hope it will, there's got to come a moment when a human being walks through or into the field. Doesn't there? Uh, yeah. So, this is where we've always been worried about you, and now with three million volts, this is real serious. Well, I suppose actually dead is dead, and even your earlier Jacob's Ladder, if things had gone wrong, would have fried you alive. Yeah. So this would just be a more spectacular ending. Uh, yeah. I'd probably vaporize. Vaporize, yeah. That's what I was thinking, vaporization. Um, but but on the other hand, you're really, and this is what I got out of the first interview, you're really serious about this, aren't you? Oh, yeah. And you really do believe that you can move things in time, huh? Yeah. Um, do you think, and this is a philosophical question for you, but I've always been fascinated with people working on time machines, and you're down to some serious work now, serious machine. Um, do you think it would be a good thing for us uh, to be able to move in time? Um, Have you given that any thought? Well, if it, if it does like it does in the movies, heck, that'd be heck, that'd be great. But um, I, I don't know. I've been talking with some other like uh, theoretical physicists and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, as far as like the quantum mechanics and like the physics of it. Yes. It'd be similar. Well, I wouldn't get torn. I'm sure you've heard of a black hole before. Oh, of course. Uh, it's like, uh, basically, if I, it, I wouldn't get torn apart since it's, I'm using electromagnetism instead of gravity. Right. But the uh, problem is, if I like, go through it, yeah. uh, um, basically what I'm thinking is, um, I might like, like say I go to, I want to go 10 years in the future. Well, okay, I went 10 years in the future, but I'm in a different universe. And unfortunately, uh, the, 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 the theory, if I like, go back through, then I'll be in a, a yet another different universe. I'll never get back to the one I left. Which, that's a down, like a downside. Downside, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, when you get ready to get to the human part of the experiment, would you be willing to allow me to come and videotape? I mean, something like this really ought to be documented. Oh, sure. And uh, it could be used for one of several things. I mean, to document a new step in physics the first documented time travel, or alternately as a memorial for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, here was the life of madman, excuse me, Mike Markham, um, and here's how he ended. But he believed in what he was doing. And so I'm, I'm really serious about this in a way. It would make a uh, either a great documentation of time travel or it would make a very good memorial. Now... Now, surely your parents and your friends, where are your parents? Uh, I, haven't ta- I haven't talked to them in, gee, like 10 years. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. Then friends, uh, what do they say to you? Are they, are they concerned about you? Uh, well, some of them think I'm full of crap. Uh, some think I'm crazy. Uh, the others are, like, kind of worried. <laughs> Have you wondered about whether you're crazy yourself? Now, I'm not saying you're crazy, and far from it, because actually I really think you're working in a fascinating area, frankly, and I might be tempted to do something like that myself. But uh, have you ever considered your own sanity? 
Uh, and, and said to yourself, Mike, I might be nuts. Well, uh, is, is that a is that a yes? I never really considered it, really. Never thought about it. No. So ba uh, basically, uh, at all. Well, I take that back. I kind of have, but I just figured, well, I am, I am, and not, not. Case of Ross, or Ross. Or yeah. Uh huh. All right, um, Mike, hold on, because uh, the phones here are going nuts. The people remember you, obviously. They want to talk to you. Um, stay right where you are, and we'll be back to you after the news, all right? Okay. My guest is Madman Markham. His plans have uh, increased exponentially. In fact, a lot of the work is done. We'll be back. Maybe. Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. Listeners west of the Rockies can call Art toll free by dialing 1 800 618 8255. If you're east of the Rockies, the toll free number is 800 825 5033. If you've never called Art before, you may use the first time caller line at area code 702 727 1222. And the wild card line is area code 702 727 1295. When you get through, let it ring, and Art will answer your call in order on the air. This is the CBC Radio Network. West of the Rockies at 1-800-618-8255. 1-800-618-8255. East of the Rockies at 1-800-825-5033. 1-800-825-5033. This is the CBC Radio Network. Thank you, W-T-A-Z. I've been looking for this song. Good people at W-T-A-Z sent me back said, we've got it right here in our hot little hands. How would you like us to send you a copy? Yes! All right. I have as my guest, Madman Markham, Mike Markham, actually, who began by building a simple Jacob's Ladder controlled by a laser, which, if I recall correctly, he took out of a laser disc machine. He threw a screw through it. It disappeared. Then he moved on up, borrowed, stole, actually, transformers from the power company, got arrested uh, just short of his gigantic experiment. Now, there have been many developments, and he has done the most incredible job. He's got a, a garage now, a laboratory, where he has built what he believes to be a time machine. And it's big. I mean, the scale of this thing is massive, and we'll catch up on that in a second. Then we'll launch into the phones and let you talk to him while he's still here in this time frame on Earth. All right, back now to Madman Markham. Madman, uh, because there is an audience that joins us at midnight, just if you would, you've, you've now got, it's out of your apartment. You're not using the power company power anymore. You are using this giant generator. You've got 15-kilowatt generator uh, with a 440 output. You've got a whole series of gigantic transformers. How big again, please? Uh, they change 440 to 500,000 each. 500,000 each. Yeah. Uh, you've built yourself a grid with a rotating group of 24 magnets, electromagnets, is it? Well, 24 in each circle, then i got seven circles, so it's 168 altogether. Oh, my gosh. And each one of these is how big? 
it's about 5,000 volts at about 1 amp. And physically, how big are they? Uh, the each circle is about 10 feet wide. Man, this thing is gigantic. This thing is going to be, do you remember that movie, uh, oh, what was the name of it? Where in Egypt, where they dug up the big circle, do you remember that? Uh, yeah, Stargate. Know? Stargate, thank you. What you're building sounds like Stargate. Well, that's like a, um, I told you about that guy out in uh, Springfield, Oregon. He's setting up like a, like a, a really big lab for me. Yeah. And, well, I was like, already had, already grew up plans for that, like a uh, bigger scale. Yeah. And for that, I plan to use, uh, well, it's going to be a little bit more complicated yet. Uh, instead, it's like a, uh, it's going to be, basically, it's going to use uh, 49 volts, two phase at uh, very low frequency. But before we get to that, I mean, you're going to carry through this experiment before you get to that one, right? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, well, the reason I'm doing this is to, like, uh, basically improve it before I make the big one. It'd be a lot cheaper to, like, build a little one than improve it rather than build a big one and then tear it back down again. All right, now, listen to this fax that I just got. It's from a pastor, a man of the cloth. Art, tell, you, tell Madman if he wants a human volunteer to go through first, I will do it. I have, since I was a small child, been fascinated with time travel. As a matter of fact, I've been doing my own research and testing on time travel. I've been perusing another route. Remember the movie Somewhere in Time. He's been doing that thing. But he is actually, um, a, Pastor Bradley is um, volunteering to go through. Now, this brings up a big moral issue, because if Pastor Bradley should go the way a fly goes, and you know those little fly zappers? Yeah. If Pastor Bradley were to go like that, they could potentially, potentially, they could charge you with, I don't think murder, but, uh, but maybe manslaughter. Yeah. Um, so you would be disinclined, I take it, or do you want a human volunteer? Uh, well, uh, uh, well, that's really nice of him, but if I do a human volunteer uh, because of that, uh, I'd probably be the one. You're going to be the one? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, certainly some scientists have injected themselves with their own serums. Uh, you know, to prove, uh, here's another practical suggestion for you be, just before we go to the phones. Art, please ask uh, Madman what he thinks about the idea of instead of first even putting animals into the vortex, here's an idea for you. Basically strap a camcorder to the end of a pole and put it into the vortex. Maybe we could safely see what's on the other side. Uh, when the experiment gets to that stage, that is. Now, that's not a half-bad idea, or is it? Well, wait a minute now. A camcorder would be a, a, wouldn't be survive the electromagnetic field, would it? Uh, well, the way it's, the way it's set up, uh, basically the, in the center of it. Yeah. Okay, you got your screen mesh. Yeah. Um, right, I'm thinking uh, there's going to be, I'm thinking using, I'm just going to use whatever works better. I don't know yet. But I'm either going to use just like a straight rod. Or use like a like a metal pipe. Now, if, if if the metal pipe works better, then basically that metal pipe act like some, like to, to some degree like a magnetic shield. Uh huh. So it, it, that might be an okay idea. Yeah, but I don't know if I'll get the same result, the same results as with that or with a rod. All right. And this, dear Art, when Madman Markham mentioned using seven rings of twenty-four electromagnets. I was reminded of Bob Lazar's description of the drive units on the UFOs he allegedly studied, although I believe he said they were using 48 sectors per ring instead of 24. That's Ron in Birmingham, Alabama. Have you uh, heard about Bob Lazar's... Uh... Mm. Do you know the guy? Uh, I heard his name from somewhere. Oh, right. heard, uh, heck, I... Well, he worked uh, allegedly at an area called S4 here near where I live, and actually uh, back-engineered uh, some supposedly extraterrestrial uh, uh, vehicles. Yeah. And uh, he, he was claiming that's what they use. So you're not far away from what he... Well, the, uh, this is really interesting, actually. Yeah. Well, it's like I was kind of like debating on how many... I knew it was going to be a multiple of 12, but I didn't know whether to use uh, 24. Originally, I was going to do 96, but yeah. then, then the ring would be... Uh, the heck, at 5,000 watts, each, each uh, thing that has to be pretty good size, the heck, the ring would be, geez, it'd be 150 feet wide, and that'd be too dang. 
Yeah, I can't believe the progress you've made. And, yeah. then, and then to the main unit, you're going to be applying 3 million volts. Yeah. I mean, this is much, much, much bigger than, than even yeah, that. Yeah, these things, I mean, they're hard and heck to insulate as far as the secondary windings go. I'll bet. I bet. Uh, what size wire do you have to use? Oh, it's, well, since the uh, outpart current's only 3 milliamp, it's uh, really tiny. It's like a, uh, what gauge is it? I think I bought spools and spools and spools of it. Um, well, as I said, look, I think no matter what happens, it is going to be incredibly yeah. dra dramatic. Yeah, I think, if I remember right, I think it's like 30 gauge. 30 gauge, all right. Yeah. Well, it's going to be very a, dr a very, very dramatic event, and I'm really serious. I will fly out when you're ready, and I will videotape it, and we will either use it to document actual time travel or use it as a memorial, which I guarantee will be run on uh, many outlets and many people across the country. We'll see your last millisecond. You know what would be awful, though? If you went through and it looked like you were zapped, and there was nothing left of you. We really wouldn't know whether you had gone to yeah, another... Yeah, that's, that's the down part of it. Even, yeah. if I, even if it's successful, and it's one of those deals where I end up in another universe, like if, it's, if this thing has, does like a black hole does, which yeah. Yeah. essentially it's the same thing. It's a, basically a hole in the space-time continuum. Um, if, uh, if, it, if it's a successful jump, I'll be the only one that knows it. So Bummer. Yeah. Unless, I suppose... You know, I hate to use this analogy, but uh, when a fly hits one of those zappers, it, it sort of vaporizes. Yeah. But there's still a little dust, right? Yeah. So there'd be some dust of Markham left, maybe some sort of dust. I mean, it wouldn't totally, or would it? To, would it, you know more about this than I do? Would it? If, if it didn't well, work out, well, it's only three milliamps. I'm sorry, it wouldn't vaporize me. It probably just. I'd probably be electrocuted and have burn marks all over me, but since the current's only three milliamps, it probably wouldn't do a whole lot. Uh huh. Well, it's going to be dramatic, that's for damn sure. I really would. I'm serious about this. I'll come videotape it. If you'll allow me to. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, if you had to guess, what period of time are we talking about here? Uh, well, that's, that's, that's just it. Just uh, a guess. Just a guess. Uh, hmm. Assuming things continue to work out on your timeline, as, uh, as you want them to, when, just a guess. Well, I'm assuming I don't run into any problems, like technical problems. I'll probably hit, maybe, I still need to finish electromagnets. Uh, I'm only about halfway down. That was probably a month. A, m a month? Yeah. I'm work I, I got a full-time job, so basically I only get to work, work on it on evenings and weekends. Well, that's good, because I'm going to Europe here for a couple of weeks, and I'm going to have to arrange to uh, to fly out there, and which I'm going to do. So um, you need to keep me informed. I will. All right. Now, let's go to the phones and, and see what they have people have to say to you. Uh, this is quite remarkable. Uh, Wildcard Line, you're on the air with uh, Mike Markham. Hello. Hi. Hi. Where, uh, where, are, where are you, sir? I'm in, uh, this is Tony. I'm in uh, Issaquah. I'm listening to Como. Oh, okay. Uh, Seattle. Yes, sir. Uh, what was the name of the guy in Springfield, Oregon, who's doing it, too? Um, well, he's not really doing it, too. Basically, he's just like, he's more or less a coordinator between me, uh, a couple other guys, and... Uh, well, can you spell his last name? It's uh, uh, Daniel Webb. Daniel Webb. Yeah, W-E-B-B. And uh, did you did you videotape uh, the Jacob's Ladder and the screw disappearing? Uh, well, I didn't expect this to happen. I didn't have one handy. No, see, this was his very first scale model experiment. Did the screw disappear and not come back? Uh, it reappeared roughly half a second later. Half a second later. And yeah, when, when it was disappeared, on the edge was it inside it a, well, well, a, a, a ball of, of, of plasma or what? I mean, uh, it okay, you know what the sparkle, you know what a heat signature looks like, right? Yeah. Like, like so the buzz source of heat, you get wavy lines. Uh huh. Well, this was like, it was like, heck, I'm surprised I even noticed it. Um, Basically, I thought I was seeing things. Um, basically, this was kind of like amoeba shape. They were just going straight up and down. Uh -huh. The wavy lines, they were, well, they we weren't really wavy lines unless you, like, pay attention to the background uh -huh. of it. But it was like, like kind of like amoeba shape. Kind of like a mirage type shape? Um, yeah. 
or heat waves you're saying, like on a yeah, but they're going straight up and down. It was going kind of circular. Okay, so the, none of this stuff was videotaped. Unfortunately, because <laughs> um, I, I, no, I, 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 caller, hold on a second. I, because I, I can remember the original story when he was on the air. Uh -huh. uh, he got the screw through, but what was controlling this was this little laser that he had taken out of a, literally out of a um, CD player. A CD player, thank you. And uh, he overloaded the laser, and that's is that correct, Mike? Uh, yeah. See, I got to throw this thing through two or three times because I thought I was really flipping out. Right. And I said, "Cool, I discovered something here. I got to get this on tape." And right. Not. Probably five seconds after I said that, I was getting ready to turn the stuff off and go borrow a camcorder to the laser caught fire. And, oh. and that's when he started on the bigger one, the bigger model, which yeah, he had. Yeah, because that's the laser was the most complicated part, and I figured, well, if I'm going to rebuild the laser, I might as well do a big version. So right, so, so to, to get to the point, uh, then he built the big one caller, and, of course, the, the long arm of the law stepped in to the middle of that experiment. Well, I hope you get something uh, uh, something of the original one on your website, Art. I really appreciate it. And my question really is, why is a, why are you replacing the laser with the rotating magnetic field? All right, good question. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Well, it's, uh, if I ever jump like jump through it, uh, but, but no laser there, all I have to do is worry about the electric spark then. And another thing, uh, a magnetic field is I found, I found out is a lot more efficient. Uh, and this was on advice from a physicist, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that he's on the right track. I, I think you were originally too, but you have made a quantum leap, certainly, uh, going to this uh, rotating magnetic field. I, I think you're really on to something. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mike Markham. Hello, Art. This is uh, Rick in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Well, hello, Rick. Hey, Madman. Yeah. I want to tell you what I think you should do is I think that you should uh, get a radio frequency. I think is the frequency you're using, the rotating frequency, 160 megahertz? Well, no, he's not oh. using RF. He's oh, he's not using RF. No, he's using these rotating uh, alternating magnetic uh, uh, Oh, okay. The, um, actually, well, um, as well, far as the spark goes, I can adjust the frequency of that. I'm using, like, very low frequencies. Well, I just remember something about the Philadelphia experience, 160 RF. That's correct. But... Anyway, what I think that you could do to make your make your experiment a little easier on you is if you uh, concentrate on sending a message back from the future to yourself at the present time. Ooh, that way a... you would know. I mean, like a RF, like a like what you could do is write down a frequency and a time and put it in a safe place. No, even better yet, why not just write a note and tell me or someone else where that note is going to be? Well, it would be for him. That way, he could talk to himself, <laughs> and he could. Well, tell yeah, I know, himself, but it's not. It's not Michael that we've got to convince. Uh, uh, well, he, I if, know, but uh, what I'm saying is, Michael could uh, tell himself how to actually make his machine. That way, it would. It would be kind of a lazy way to do it. Well, we'll have his machine. We don't have to worry about that part. If we want to prove, right. if we want to prove that he went into the future, then he writes a note. And he leaves it in pre-designated place, and um, depending, of course, now who knows how far in the future he gets tossed. Yeah. But uh, if it's not too far, then that note is going to appear. Right. Well, that's true. Or he could make a a radio because radio waves are never lost. I mean, your voice is out there forever, Art. Yeah, I know, but we and can't recapture it, sir. Once transmitted, it keeps on trucking. It's not like we can go capture Yeah, but if you could figure out a way to recapture it, if you could, if but, you but, could but, transmit but, on tachyon beams or... Oh, well, now, see, now we're getting way out there. Yeah, uh, I guess. Well, all right, I like the note idea. Uh, that seems uh, simple to me. Uh, then there's one other little thing to worry about, Mr. Markham, and that is how do you know you're going to go to the future? How do you know you're not going to go to the past? Um, well, that's another, that gets pretty complicated there, but I talked to, this is a separate physicist here, he said normally it goes forward. Now, how it controls, um, how you do it in reverse is, well, there's a couple ways that I've been told. Yeah. One's this little special oscillator you have with you, and another uh, way is uh, basically, uh, Nah, heck, I have to. I got to wrote down a piece of paper somewhere, but basically it has something to do with uh, uh, basically changing like 
They're like invert the phase, like invert your phases or something like All that. All right. Here, here's the other thing. As in uh, that movie, for you to return, presumably if you get tossed into the future, um, if the machine is continuing to run, then that hole remains available for you to, to jump back through. Would that be true or false? Uh, well, it's, like, like I said, if it, if it's... Uh, every physicist I've talked to, they, the, all, all they got in common is uh, basically it's similar to a black hole except no gravity is going to tear me apart. Um, basically, and if that's the case, then I can just, it's like a doorway, I can just walk back in. Walk, walk back in, yeah. All so right. Problem, like, if, it, if it's like almost uh, identical to, if it's identical to a black hole except for the gravity part, uh-huh. uh, basically, when I, when I walk back in, I'm one universe. Now, logically, like a regular doorway, if you walk back through, you, you came back where you left. Well, so my, my, my comparison to Stargate, man, man, wasn't that far off, was it? Yeah. That's, oh, right. Actually, it uh, reminds a lot of people Stargate? of that movie, yeah. yeah. Particularly the way you're building it. You know, it sounds like Stargate. All right, Madman, hold on. We'll be right back to you. This is Madman, not too far outside Kansas City for the moment in this time frame. Yes, sir. Folks, we'll get it on videotape. At any rate, we're going to take a break here. If you want to ask Madman a question, come now. You're listening to the CBC Radio Network. All right. Back now to Madman Morton. Madman, last time you were on the air, you gave out your phone number. Yeah. And um, what happened after that? Uh, basically, I, got, I was got, getting one call after another for the next three days. Uh huh. Um, so people are going to, of course, ask if they can contact you again this time. Um. And last time I warned you. Yeah. Well, last time I was debating whether I should use my address or my phone number. Uh, I should have went to the address. Okay. So you... I didn't really mind it. But it was like uh, I'll get cranky with after three days without sleep. <laughs> well, I, you, you gotta you gotta admit I warned you. Yeah. I did warn you. Yeah. All right. Uh, so now you've got an address. Why don't you go ahead and give your address now so people can write it down and communicate with you. While, while okay. It's uh, two oh nine and a half. I'm sorry. Uh, 209 and a half. 209 and one half. South 13th Street. South 13th Street. Uh, St. Joseph, Missouri. St. Joseph. Mo. And the zip code? Uh, 64501. 64501. All right, good. Uh, 209 and a half, South 13th Street, St. Joseph, Missouri. Six four five zero one, right? Yeah, and if you put Madman on top of that, I don't know if the, if the postman will know who I am or not, but he probably will. Yeah. All right. Um, here's a fax for you. Oh, um, well, I guess I'll hold that. All right. Here's a fax, dear Art. If this screw went several seconds into the future, wouldn't it always be those same several seconds into the future? I don't see how this screw can exist in the present and the future. If this screw did happen to go into the future, it suggests the screw had to travel backwards in time to get to the present from the future. Could you please have Mr. Markham elaborate? Uh, well, what it boils down to, what I think happened is, actually it wasn't several seconds, I've been nice, I've been nice, but actually it was about, just enough for me to measure is about half, roughly half a second. Right. And uh, what I think happened is uh, when it went through that thing. Yeah. Um, it's it, after it went through that uh, well portal vortex, whatever you want to call it. Whatever it is, yeah. Um, it basically just went straight from basically it skipped over half a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Now, now my question. Um, have you considered this possibility, Madman? I mean, there are three million volts. We're talking serious, serious stuff here. Now, there might be those who would consider you are, in effect, committing suicide. Okay? Yeah. And um, that instead of the police coming, because you have not, obviously, you're not breaking the law now. Yeah. But, but, you may be, uh, I mean, have you ever thought they might? Come in that house? Well, I, I, I was going to, I was going to approach it more gently, but yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. 
Um, well, let's see. Um, basically, that's, I'm on probation now. Basically, they made a condition my probation to go see a shrink, like, roughly once a month now. So you've been going to a shrink? Yeah, and, uh... And have you you've told the shrink all about this, right? Yeah, well, she already knew about it anyway. Oh, she? Yeah, she said, well, she, she saw me on TV, but... Okay, yeah. now, well, oh, this is very interesting. Now, I didn't know that you've been doing this. So now, what does she say, after listening to, to what you've said? Uh, basically, I told her, well... Uh, basically, in her opinion, I'm delusional, and uh, I'm, I'm on other things, and she put me on Risperdal. Uh, but so evidently, it's not a delusion, because it, it has no effect on me. And I've been taking it for, oh, gee, about six months now. Uh-huh. Um, so, um, so she she thinks you're delusional? Uh, yeah. Uh, has, well, what is her attitude about your going, I mean, she knows... You're getting closer and closer to the big one here. Yeah. And what's she saying to you about this? Uh, well, basically, basically she asked me, uh, like, go, it's, it's the same thing. I'll go in. She asks, well, anything changed, Mike? And I always tell her, uh, not really. So. <laughs> <laughs> so she probably thinks time to increase the dosage. <laughs> yeah. Or something like that. Hmm. Well, Michael. she hasn't really increased it in the past couple months, so. Maybe she figures that's as much as chemicals can do. <laughs> uh, wild card line, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Yes, this is Dr. Joe. And okay. um, I have done, uh, oh, a lot of science fair stuff in my youth and uh, continue a hobby of physics uh, as an amateur. And um, I'm rather impressed with uh, uh, Madman's uh, recent mm-hmm. research. Mm-hmm. I had a couple of suggestions. Let me ask you this, sir. Based on what you know, you heard him describe what he's building, right? Yes. When, when Should he walk through this? What would happen? Not right away. Uh, the first thing that he needs to do is he needs to get a spring-loaded uh, plexiglass, or excuse me, spring-loaded timer and put it in a plexiglass container and um, get some sort of a, a ramp that he can roll it on through the uh, Gate. tunnel that he's uh, oh. created. Yeah. And uh, he needs to videotape it uh, and have another timer in the foreground and so that he can see what um, what the difference is. Kind of like what they did in Back to the Future. Yes, something yeah. like that. So all right, that all right. but, but, but then assuming that works out and he actually physically walks through a biological entity, what do you think will happen? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, yeah, me either. Let me uh, give a few more suggestions. Uh, one of them is we need to put one of Art's parts through there and see what happens when it's energized like Stan Deo recommended. Remember he said if you just oscillate it, it'll lift Please, up. Please, I, 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 my parts are already uh, scattered yeah. all over the place, one, one, one at a time here, please. Uh, uh, they're at universities. That's a whole other story. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hello. Yes, Art Bell. Yes, sir. Where are you? I'm Mark from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Hi, Mark. Hey. I wanted to ask Man Man, I've been reading a book on uh, the current state of the art in uh, quantum physics and uh, what uh, most quantum physics tend to think now is that in order to explore uh, time or interdimensional travel, you have to generate energies that uh, were only present at uh, the initial moment of the Big Bang, uh, when uh, the universe existed in ten dimensions. All right. Now, as the Big Bang cooled, yeah. uh, six of the dimensions curled in upon themselves, and we were left with four that we know, three of space. So you're trying to suggest you cannot generate enough energy. Well, what most physicists say now, in order to explore hyperspace or time, you need to generate an amount of energy called the Planck energy, or 10 to the 19 billion electron volts, which is about one quadrillion times larger than energy is currently available in our accelerator. All right. Well, I I appreciate that suggestion, but there are, in fact, indications. If you look at the Philadelphia experiment, if you look at Lazar's work, um, there are indications that it can be done with much lower voltage if other factors are involved like this uh, large rotating magnetic field that uh, Madman is talking about. Uh, right, Madman? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, now, uh, the, the wire got to use like in like megavolts. Uh, basically, uh, the guy I talked to says, uh, it, it worked best. Uh, unfortunately, I can't generate that much right now, but it worked best. I had, uh, 40 million volts two phase. Now, I'm having a heck of a time insulating three volts. <laughs> or three million volts. I, I, I understand. Now. Yeah, eventually I hope to get to that point, but I can't do that right now. Huh? There, there are those. A madman who would say this cr is crazy and suicidal, and you're going to be a crispy critter. And is there any way to talk you out of this? Uh, I guess I guess if you're a psychiatrist, can't then nothing we could say would talk you out of it. Uh, no, let's see. Actually, my my basically my girlfriend tried to talk me out of it. You mean did she leave you because she couldn't? Uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, that's why I said. understand. All right, first time caller line. You're on the air, air with Madman Markham. Yes. Hi. Hi, you two. I have a question for both of you. All right. Where are you? Both of you. Where, me? where are you, dear? I'm calling from Santa Monica, California. Santa Monica. All right. Okay. Uh, my question for you, Art, is I need to find a station where I can listen to you with clarity. Well, what about KBC in Los Angeles? What? 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 what where's that? Seven ninety? Yeah. Okay. So you moved from seven. No. From Kogo. Well, yes, uh, we're on 760, which which is KFMB in San Diego, and, and you can probably receive that, or go to KBC 790. 790, okay. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't find you there. All right, uh, my question, my comment, and uh, for Madman is, what kind of protective gear are you going to be wearing in secure vehicle? Are you going to put yourself in? I don't believe you can just walk through. Well, it well, basically, it really depends. If uh, well, on what kind of electro center electro I'm using, if it's going to be just a rod, if it's going to be a tube. Um, if it's going to be a rod, uh, hmm, I would be, I would think nothing metal would be a good idea. No, I'm going to be I'm going to be wearing something like a more or less a giant rubber glove. Yes. Because even with a tube, uh, I mean, not necessarily get killed, but I'll get the nasty shock of my life. So. All right. Well, good luck to you. All right. There you go. Thank you very much for the call. Um, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hi. Yes. Uh, what I'm interested in is what is your scientific background that eventually got you headed this way? It was just playing around or what? And then uh, for art... Uh, okay. The answer to the question is just playing around. You don't have... Um, you, you're not a physicist, are you, uh, Mark? Uh, no, that's it. I just turned 23 last week, so... Uh, he's, he's just a guy, sir. Okay, Art, if you would, at the end of the hour, play Louis Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it might fit, it might fit. Um, west of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, Art, this is Rick from the Monte KOMO. Como, in Seattle. Seattle, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would like to ask the madman three questions. One of them, was it aluminum screw that he threw through... The, uh, uh -huh. um, actually, uh, uh, heck, um, no, it was, heck, it was stuck to a magnet, so it's probably steel. It was not a, a sheet metal screw of any kind, then, huh? Okay, but well, the second question is, is you said that time-wise, could you reverse, uh, as far as the DC current, uh, could you reverse the magnetic field? And somehow, if this worked, go back in time. Would that be the? Um, that's, well, that's, I think, uh, that's a possibility. It's one we'll be working on. Find out what what controls what. Like putting two magnets together. Yeah. Opposite. Okay. I can like try that. And, See what and, happens. And the third question is that, uh, and Art might uh, go along with this. Could you charge the the aluminum and bismuth? Uh, Quit uh, messing with my parts. Well, my I, I parts are at a, they're at a university, and they're going to have a million volts applied to them, sir. So, well, he's got five million. No, three million. Three million. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Art. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Uh, a first-time caller line. You're on the air with Madman Markham. Hello. Hello. Yes, this is Lee from uh, Kansas City. Yes. And I was real interested. I, I'm not a physicist or anything, but I was interested in what you're talking about. And I was wondering, when he goes through, if the minister would go through first, it'd be murder. So why doesn't he take someone with him? That way, when he goes through, they can decide together what's going on over there, and then one could come back. Well, there's a pretty good idea. 
Uh, is there anybody, uh, Madman, who wants to go through with you? I mean, you've got friends who are helping you build this. Oh, actually, I know several people, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm assuming they don't got much faith in me because... Uh, in other words, they're, they're willing to help you make coils, but they're not willing to... Uh, well, there no one. What I'm saying is uh, there's, a, there's a couple that's willing to like go ahead and be guinea pigs, but... Uh, uh, they don't got much faith in me because uh, they're kind of, well, in my opinion, they're suicidal. But <laughs> in your opinion, they're suicidal? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you mean actually, they're thinking the machine isn't going to work, and they're suicidal, and so they don't they, care. They want to like, they want like go well, like. I'm assuming they want like go out in a really spectacular way. So. Oh, this would do it. <laughs> this would do it. Another yeah. thing I'd like to ask him: What is his background? If he's only 23 years old? Uh, aside from prison, you mean? No, 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 no. I mean with education. All right. Uh, Madman, uh, did you get through high school? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I was doing about, uh, I was majoring in electrical engineering for two years in college before I had to drop out. Uh, oh, okay. Besides that, most everything I know, learned by experiment. All right. So you're, you're an entrepreneur, a self-learned mad scientist. More or less. Uh -huh, okay. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hello, Art. Hi. My name is Eric in uh, Kentucky. Yes, hi, Eric. Hi. Uh, I was just wanted to give a suggestion for uh, Mr. Madman. Uh, maybe you could just tie a string onto something that you throw through. So you could pull it back. Yeah, just pull it right back. You know, it's easy. Or maybe shine a flashlight through it. Yeah, I was, like, I was, pull it back out, you know. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking. I was just thinking of that. Well, you know, these you things. You putting the light through two different mediums if it's uh, actually going somewhere else. Yeah, these things obviously you would try before you walk through yourself. Oh, yeah. So what we've got to do is have you perform the initial experiments, Madman, and then, uh, and, and then, of course, call me before you do the big one. I mean, when I say big one, I mean... When I jump in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely call me before that. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hello? Going once, going twice... Gone with the wind. First, first time caller line. You're on the air with Madman Markham. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, turn, turn your radio off, sir. Turn my radio off. That's no problem. That's very important. Yes. Uh, turn it off. Call the wild card lines. Area seven zero two seven two seven one two nine five. I have a question for Madman. Okay, we're not allowed to put your last name on the air, sir. Okay, Tim. So, so let us just call you Tim. And where are you calling from? Oak Grove, Missouri. Oak Grove, Missouri. All right, go ahead, Tim. Okay, um, I have a question, a couple questions for Matt Name Markham. Yep. Um, first off, is would he think about doing a, putting a laser with the magnetic field? Well, I think that the magnets uh, are actually are not... the magnet does the same thing as the laser, only a lot more efficiently. Yeah, I mean, what, what what originally did it was the combination with laser with the, with 15 degree air is what caused what originally caused that. Okay. No, uh, the magnetic field basically does the same thing as that, but a lot more efficiently. Yeah, I was thinking of using the laser to help dampen the field possibly more with the in uh, conjunction with the magnet. And because of um, wave particle duality, by that I took a physics class in college. Um, wave particle duality in light, if you possibly put one at the top and the bottom going together, canceling each other out in a wave in the wave form. Well, as you have heard, the design, uh, yeah. which is significant. I mean, this is a stargate sized thing he's building. Yes. Um, what do you think is going to happen to him? When he walks through. What will happen? Yeah. What do you think will happen based on the design you've heard him describe? Well, that's hard to say. Doing the Philadelphia experiment, it can happen like that. Or, well, it just depends. Now, it's worth reminding Man Man at this point that... Um, yeah, he could possibly get killed over it again. Well, no, well even, even if he gets through, let's say he gets through, remember the results of the Philadelphia experiment yeah, where a sail sailors were like halfway, you know, buried in the deck. It was horrible. You remember that? Yes, and I also heard that people who did survive yeah. were crazy over it, just went totally crazy. 
Well, in this case, though, they might not be able to tell any difference. Yeah. So Madman may have an advantage. <laughs> oh, actually, um, <laughs> Bob, basically, I don't know. But I'm thinking what, what could have been part of that is uh, they, uh, there might have been some, like, low frequencies in there. And, well, your brain waves are anywhere from 0.1 to 10 hertz. And yeah. it just so happens that's the same frequencies I'm playing with. So basically I made this sheet metal, like sheet tin helmet over my head. You're actually you're actually going to be using frequencies uh, akin to the ones that the harp transmitter is using. Yeah, basically it's uh, anywhere from 0.1 to 30 hertz. Oh man! Heck, I'd like to get lower, but it's at low, lower frequencies. It's like, well, I need you need like a really giant capacitor, and I can't find one that big. Uh, well, we might be able to find one. Madman, you want to do one more hour? Okay. All right. Uh, Madman Markham is my guest, and he will be back. Uh, at least this time, I think. We'll certainly be back. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. See there? I take requests. Skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. Now, Michael, you listen to this. I think to myself, what a wonderful world. You're listening to the CBC Radio Network. Stay right there. The colors of the rainbow. You're listening to Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. Listeners west of the Rockies can call Art toll free by dialing 1 800 618 8255. If you're east of the Rockies, the toll-free number is 800-825-5033. If you've never called ART before, you may use the first-time caller line at area code 702-727-1222. And the wild card line is area code 702-727-1295. When you get through, let it ring, and ART will answer your call in order on the air. This is the CBC Radio Network. Toll free, west of the Rockies at 1 800 618 8255. 1 800 618 8255. East of the Rockies at 1 800 825 5033. 1 800 825 5033. This is the CBC Radio Network. It is, and we are hearing the story, the new story. And the big plans of Madman Markham, I call him that. His real name is Mike Markham. He's in Missouri. And he is building, to me, what sounds like Stargate. It really does sound like Stargate. We'll get him to describe it again here in a few moments. I went out and talked to my wife during the break. I said, well, you know, this really sounds like Stargate. She said that to me it sounds like a barbecue. And she could be right, I suppose. Anyway, back to Madman and your questions in a moment. It's to understand the scale of what Madman Markham is building. He began with a small-scale model which he uh, of this Jacob's Ladder uh, controlled by a laser. He threw a steel screw through. It disappeared for about a half, full half second, then reappeared. Then he built a big one. Uh, he had to appropriate some power company transformers to do it, unfortunately. And uh, they caught him and put him in jail. He did his time. 
uh, we did a show with him some time ago. But now, now he's acquired a gigantic generator, and he has built these gigantic transformers, many of them, and electromagnets, and he is building, to me, what seems to be roughly Stargate, actually. And at some point, of course, he is going to walk through it. Now, uh, first of all, uh, Madman, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that we've got a caller here who wants to know the scale uh, of what you're building, and it'll be well that we, we explain it. We have new audience at this hour. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Are you there? Yes. Um, I'm calling from Platt City. Oh, and my name's Pat. Um, I was wondering, how large is this thing? Are you going to, like, build it in your basement and do it like that? Okay, we'll tell you the story. Here's what's happened. He did it, you see, on his back porch originally, and that's when the cops got him. Uh, that's when he had to do his time. Now, he has acquired, it is a, what, a garage? Uh, yeah. It's a garage. All right, if you would give the audience a sense of the scale of what you have now built. Um, well, let's see, the, the, the electromagnets are circular, let's see. And there are how many of them? Uh, all, well, there's 20, there's seven circles, each circle has 24 in it. And each electromagnet is how big? Uh, including the core and the coil, about 200 pounds. <laughs> Good God. All right. Uh, and so there are several, seven circles of these. Uh, well, there's going to be. I haven't got it finished yet. Yeah, right. But seven circles of 24 magnets each, and they will be rotating. And then there will be not exactly a Jacob's Ladder, but a um, either a pole, you said. Well, there's, there's like a, a, like a, like a screen a mesh. Screen mesh. Um, actually, I'm, I'm use, I use that stuff. Uh, you know that uh, it's like a, a screen door. Yeah, it's it's that fine because it's only three milliamps, so it won't melt it down or nothing. Three milliamps, but the voltage you are developing is three million volts, yeah. right? And you are doing this with transformers that you have now hand wound. Um, actually, I used a motor. Um, well, I yeah. don't blame you. Uh, yeah. And and they are how big? And weigh how much? Oh, each one, I have no idea. Uh, oh, let's see. They're, oh, good grief. Uh, they're about the size of a small substation transformer. That's big. Yeah, the, this probably weighs maybe uh, probably a ton or, ton or two a piece. A ton or two a piece. And how many of them do you have? Uh, six. Six. So here will be the three million volts. Here will be this incredible circle uh, of of uh, magnets, seven seven circles, and then at some point you are going to you're going to go through it. Now uh, here is um, Dave in Houston, Texas. He says, "Madman, I have relatives in St. Joseph, Missouri. Is that far from you?" That's why it's the town I'm in. Okay, my father-in-law owns St. Joseph Electronics. If you run short of capacitors or resistors, drop that's by. Where, actually, that's where I get my uh, all my parts from. Really? Yeah. I go there all the time. Heck, well, I'm probably their number one customer because heck, I just heck, I just got done buying uh, a bunch of parts for a Cascade multiplier, and heck, I, heck. Okay, well, always well, happy to see me because every time I go there, I spent a couple. Heck, last time I was there, I spent fifteen hundred dollars. So. Oh man! All right, well, this is Dave in Houston, and I guess maybe you've got a little pull now because this is relative. All right. Okay. So mention Dave in Houston when you go back next time. Maybe it gets you a discount. Okay. All right. Uh, plus, of course, if you never come back, they can go down and recover. Any anyway, <laughs> dear Art and Madman, it sounds like a one-way trip. You best think about it a little more. I dream of time travel myself, but I don't feel it's worth my life. Now, that's a good question, Madman. I, listen, by the way, I, I should say, I was talking to my board op up in uh, Oregon during the break, and he said, look, mad as this guy may sound, a, he's really doing it. B, a lot of people thought Thomas Edison was totally out of his mind. And a lot of other inventors who have done things like you're apparently about to do, uh, Michael, um, and maybe you're not so mad after all, and maybe it's people like you that, that, that get out on the cutting edge uh, that really do make the jumps, the leaps in technology that others are afraid to try. So... So, little kudos for you there. Um, all right. Um, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. 
Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I was wondering, um, I think everyone needs to understand or think about the scale on which he is working. Um, I'm reminded of another movie, uh, Time Cop. Uh, what are some of the moral ramifications of what you are doing? I mean, traveling back in time. Uh, no, well, he, 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 he thinks he's... Well, wait a minute now. He thinks he's going forward in time, not back. Yes, but he said he was also considering working on going back in time. Yeah, he, he, as a matter of fact, he did, and... Uh, uh, it's it's a very good point. The, the, what do you mean by moral ramifications? In other words, that he might change something that would affect all of us? Exactly. It's a good point. And, and we'll have him address that in a second. But here, here's another suggestion, uh, Madman. Art, tell him, before he goes, he should put $10,000 in a reinvesting CD and take his bank book with him. When he arrives, if he arrives, he'll be a rich man. Barry in Arizona. That's worth your consideration. But what about this caller's question, the moral question, that you might instead go back in time, disrupt something, and cause havoc? Well, that's assuming. Actually, I would if, uh, if, uh, like, I, if I like, showed up in the same universe I left. But uh, uh, I've been, been talking with a lot of quantum physicists, and they think, well, that's, they think it's virtually impossible to stay in the same universe. And if that's the case, then whatever I do, it won't affect this one. So <laughs> That's a good point. How about that, caller? That uh, um, seems to satisfy my... Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. First time caller line, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hi. How are you doing? This is Dave from Kent. Hi, Dave. Yeah, I got a question for you, Madman. Why do you associate the disappearance of the object directly with time? Um... I think I got asked that question last time, too. Um, it just, uh, well, no, heck, over the past, I didn't really, at first, I didn't really know what to think. Uh, I was, that, the uh, heck, I thought he'd maybe, like, teleported or something like that, but, um, but, you, do you it, well, basically, it, it fits, like, uh, basically all the current, all the current, uh, quantum physics, uh, quantum physics theories and stuff like that. Uh, have you explored any other possibilities, such as um, maybe the bending of light waves or something to to describe light? Well, waves? yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, it's like similar to what the Phil Duff experiment people set out to do, but they turned out, turned up they ended up messing up time. Uh, that's why I, I was considering that possibility too. Like I uh, like like I said last time I was on the show, maybe I made a really intense magnetic field intense enough to be in light. Now I know. Uh, let me ask this, Madman: Are you not at all concerned? That like in the Philadelphia experiment, yeah, sure, you'll go through something, all right. But uh, what is what is the garage floor made out of? Uh, concrete. Concrete. Well, um, suppose half of Madman's, you know, in the concrete, and the other half is above concrete, and there's no one there to help you. Oh. Hmm. That's something to think about, too. I don't know which would be worse, getting fired or getting stuck in concrete. Yeah. Uh, or this. Uh, Art, if, if, if Mad Man goes back in time, ask him to please find out the following. A, if Bill, uh, Bill really inhaled. B, if Hillary threw the lamp. And uh, C, who killed Vince Foster? Uh, that's also from right there in Kansas City. So uh, it's a little request in case you happen to go back. Yeah. Wild Card Line, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hi. Oh, Wild Card Jack from Northwest Colorado. Yes, sir. And want to know if, uh, you know, with all that electronic equipment and elect electromagnetic stuff, if you have or have considered uh, using any of Stan Dale's formulas or theories on gravitation or anything like that, maybe diversify your effort a little bit. Well, he's using a massive rotating uh, magnetic field, sir. Massive. Yeah. Yeah, about heck, about the only way to get more massive is to use a particle accelerator. <laughs> That's right. I mean, this will be a very anyway. serious magnetic field. There's no question about it. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Okay. This is Rick from Indio, California. Yes, sir. And I was wondering the fact that if he does go in time, that let's say in a, let's say he goes in like two years. Yeah. Well, in that one year time, in real reality, he has died. What happens? Is he dead then, or is he? Where, where is he then? Can't um, come back. See. 
Well, that goes back to that goes back to that the it's called the multiverse theory is what it is. Um like a okay, like in Time Cop that guy ran into itself and basically a disaster happened. Yeah. Well, actually wait the way I think it would happen, um uh it'd be just like another person. I can do what I like shake his hand or do uh, or or shake my other self's hand and do whatever but wouldn't do anything. But if if I like dying part of that time and just that basically skip over that time, the time that I died, uh, um, I wouldn't know it. Okay, I was just, I was just curious about that. And then also on the UFOs, when they're talking about the UFOs, on the, like the 48 magnets you were talking about? Uh, yeah. Um, I think sort of UFOs do work that way, where they've got a magnetic field to where they, they use our North Pole and South Pole, where yeah. they can magnetize. The unit itself, and that's how they travel. Yeah, that that yeah, could kind of e- like a pole to pole. Yeah, that that could easily be. I think uh, I, I I think you're on the right track, but I I'm cautious about encouraging you. But it sounds like you're going ahead no matter what. So again, I will come and I really will videotape this. This needs to be carefully documented, for one of many reasons. Uh, for a first time caller line, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Yeah, hi. I had a question. Go ahead. We barely hear you. Speak yeah, I up. have a question. I'm sort of a Star Trek fan, but anyway, I wanted to ask the question: What if he ripped open sort of a hole in the universe, and uh, which would cause, uh, you know, this part of the universe to uh, kind of be sucked through it? In other words, environmental implications. Well, that this. would that would happen. That would happen with a black hole because of gra- uh, the intense gravitational field. But this is an electromagnetic field. Um, as far as I know, as long as nobody so, on the other side came through this side. Uh, no, on this side, came the other side. Uh, nothing would happen. As so, far as I know. so it would be a localized effect, and it would not. Yeah. Now, if I use gravity instead of electromagnetism, that's another problem. Because uh, uh, I read in this book, if you like take 1,600 tons of iron, if you could compress it down to like the critical diameter for a black hole, yes, it'd be quite quite small. It'd be roughly, I uh, think, not, not well. That's the size of a couple hundred atoms clumped together. That's small, all right. Hold yeah, on, well, goes. it's like what would happen, it would, it would eventually, if, 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 if there ain't no way to contain this thing, if you drop it, it'd sink to the center of the Earth and eventually swallow up the whole darn planet. Well, uh, I hope that won't happen. First, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, first time caller line, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hello. Hi, this is Chris from, from Eastern Kentucky. Hello, Chris. Hi, I was just wondering, I don't think anyone's... Uh, Bought this up yet, but uh, you've kind of hit on it here and there with the uh, Philadelphia experiment stuff. <clears throat> but what might be the uh, biological implications to you when you go through it? Oh, severe. I mean, he could be a French fry. Well, I mean, not. I mean, just beyond that, you know, there's or, a lot of. Or you, if I make, yeah, like if I make it. Yeah, yeah. If you make it through, yeah. Or he could survive it uh, wholly intact. Or he could come out on the other side with a shredded liver. I mean, who knows? Well, what I'm referring to is the uh, electromagnetic field effects on the human body. There's been a lot of study studies on that here. Well, you know, with yeah, until it is very tense and it does affect the iron in your blood. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you might end up, you know. I don't think it's uh, well. It's it's intense enough to. Uh, uh, heck, I, I never have really bothered to guess uh, like how many golf it is. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Caller, do you think that Madman should be allowed to continue as an entrepreneur since he has not taken anything, or B, arrested, or C, institutionalized? Well, personally, I think he should be allowed to go ahead and go through with this. I mean, he's not hurting anybody but himself if anything does go wrong. True, uh, true. And if he were to just have been very quiet about this and not let anyone know about it. Well, and you know, he was. He was. I mean, let's be fair. Until he got arrested, no one knew about it. See, that's right. Until the police moved in on him for appropriating those transformers, uh, he hadn't told a soul about any of this. Well, one couple of other people. Well, I, what I mean is you, you weren't in the media, and you weren't certainly contacted by me until the Kansas City uh, newspaper article appeared. Yeah. So he was, uh, he did, he was not seeking publicity. Until the whole police thing. Well, that kind of backfired too. I didn't want publicity then. Uh, basically, I thought well, I went ahead and told them about because I thought they'd say, "Well, don't think I'm a nutcase and stick me in a nut house." Because I was pretty sure I was going to get a prison sentence at the time. 
Well, I don't, I don't think you're in that case. I think you've got some very strong yeah, well, ideas. Well, I don't think I'm in that case either. I was just thinking, well, maybe they'll think I'm in that case. But well, it quite work I'm, out that I'm way. sure there'll be a percentage of people that feel that way. Yeah. But, uh, like I said, you're, you're not hurting anyone. Uh, and had, had you not been caught by the police, no one would have known about it. Don't you agree, caller, that I should videotape it? Oh, yes, certainly. And I think that you should make that videotape available to your, to your listeners. You know I will. And and, I'm, and I'm a fairly new listener, only the last couple of weeks, and I'm just, you know, I love the show. And I'm, I'm really serious when I say either look, it's going to document what he has done. I mean, if the guy just disappears without a trace, then we've got something on our hands. If, yeah, definitely. If he um, vaporizes and all there's left is madman dust on the floor, then we have a memorial to a brave man who followed his uh, his heart, his instincts. Mm -hmm. And I, well, I think he should do one thing before he steps through it. I think he should make he should patent his uh, his setup and make his blueprints available to to your listeners. Then you could you could sell it as either a time travel machine or an improvement on the Kevorkian method. Yeah, you could you could do a lot of things with yeah, it. Yeah, I may be able to look at your blueprint while you're at it. I'm, I'm sorry? That I'll make a cream agent while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you have, no much, you have no idea how much money that kind of thing normally would cost. And your machine could run them through like that. All right. Listen, we got a break here. Caller, thank you. Thank you, sir. Madman, hold on. We'll do one more half hour, okay? Okay. Madman Markham is my guest. We will be back. Taking calls on the wild card line at 702-727-1295. That's 702-727-1295. First time callers can reach Art Bell at 702-727-1222. 702-727-1222. Now, here again, Art Bell. The audience may be reminded that the Sony Corporation began in a garage in Tokyo. Madman has a garage in St. Joseph, Missouri. There, something is destined to occur that one way or the other will change his life, or even end it, and we will be there, videotaping it. All right, Madman, are you there? Yeah. All right. Uh, hello, Art and Madman. I had a thought for you. What if you build this thing, get it all set up, turned on, and before you're able to walk through it, something or someone comes through from the other side? Have you thought about that? Uh, that just ran through my mind a few times. And then he goes on to suggest, also, Art, since you're going to be there, why don't you tie a rope or maybe a cable to Madman? Then a few seconds after he walks through, you can pull him back. Maybe a rope, but on no metal cables. Sorry. Is that a good idea, Madman? Uh, heck, actually, what the heck, I might, as long as it's tied to me, I might be able to, that's one way to come back and stay in, like, stay in the same universe, so to speak. Because yeah. I'm thinking as long as you got something tethered to you, and it's... Sure. Yeah. All right, and just one more thing, then we'll go back to the phones. Uh, Art, you might want to remind Madman, this is friendly advice, not to wear button fly jeans when he walks through his device. Metal buttons and three million volts do not... Mix. That's from Michael in West Seattle, and that, of course, would be a horrible a tragedy, too, too horrible to even contemplate. So, I mean, they are really right. You wouldn't want to wear a pair of pants with a metal fly or buttons. You're going to be want to dress. You're going to be want to want to be. Well, actually, I'm it's going to be like one. Of the, it'll probably be something like similar to a diver suit. Of what I'm thinking. That'd be ideal. Yeah, like covered in rubber. Uh, ideal. Toe. Ideal. Uh, totally non-conductive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. All right. You're on the air with Madman Markham. Yeah, I talked to you uh, the first time that I had heard you on Art Bell. I called you up, and I know you had gotten a lot of calls because uh, 
you were kind of tired, I think, when I called you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you you had said a few things to me, and I was just a uh, number of things I'd like to ask you real quick here. Um, one of the things you said about – now, I think you had said it on the last broadcast about a couch disappearing. You, um, yeah. Did uh, you tell me that, or was that on the radio? Well, you must have told – I don't remember that, so – I probably yeah, I probably just told you that. Uh-huh. Well, tell him wait, 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 wait. caller, wait, uh, madman. What do you mean a couch disappeared? Uh, that happened in front of four witnesses too. What? Um, well, I didn't really think a whole lot of, but I figured uh, something like one of my friends were playing a joke. We were at a party. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, um, twenty. Okay, this was. Uh, I don't know. This wasn't too long after I got the utility transformers. Uh, Basically, about a week later, we, uh, me and, let's see, one, two, me and three other, let's see. Yeah, me and three, three other friends were basically, like, partying. Uh, okay, a friend of mine stands on the couch, reaches over the counter, get a beer, okay, then they go back, and that was roughly seven o'clock, okay, at seven twenty, another friend of mine goes, hey Mike, where's your couch? And, and I wasn't, this was like in the room next to where I was, like, the room over from where I, the room I was in. Right. I go over there and my couch is not there, so I figured, well, they're playing a joke on me. <laughs> so, but anyhow, so I search for the couch, like, like I search all over the house, can't find it. There's not a couch is hard to hide. I was, I was about to say that. Yeah. Yeah, and well, I couldn't find it anywhere, so I figured, well, maybe they took it outside. But I, they, there's only like the front door. Where I've seen them carried out that. I don't think they, they couldn't. They'd have trouble carrying it out the back because there's transformers sitting there. Big ones, yeah. yeah so, so. But, when did the couch reappear? It never did. You mean this couch to this day is gone? Uh, well, if it did ever did reappear, uh, basically, um, from the last thing I heard was uh, that house uh, where I was living at before I moved to St. Joe. Yeah. Well, I moved out, and the, some other people took that house over. Well, uh, that house burnt down. So They didn't blame it on you, did they? Uh, no, I was nowhere near there. All right. Uh, caller, go ahead. Another thing, too, that you had said, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting, was, uh, and you said it to me, uh, and I don't know if you're, if you feel, I don't know what to, what you would say about it, I don't, about the psychics. Remember you said that they had kind of like forecasted, uh, or told you some things growing up, there was a couple times you had talked to them and they said something to you about the timeline. Do you remember saying anything about that? Are you there? No, man. Huh? Uh, do you do you remember anything about the, something about psychics? About psychics, and they kind of looked into your, your future, and they kind of they all, there was like three different ones over a period of growing up years. Up um, no, basically, I just, I just asked them when I was going to die, and yeah, all that was the same, that. roughly the same thing. What did they say? Uh, they said one said I was going to be eighty-seven, the other said I was going to die in twenty sixty, and. Uh, so basically, the other one said roughly the same thing. So what? What do they know? Yeah. All right. Okay, one one and, more thing. One more thing. Yeah. Uh, this Jacob's ladder concept, I kind of, you know, biblically, you look back in the Bible about the Tower of Babel, and it said that they were trying to build a tower to heaven, and that we you know God had confounded the languages because they could have done it. And I almost think that this kind of like a Stargate kind of concept. This, uh, you know, scholars have said that that was some kind of a Stargate where they were actually trying to get into a heavenly realm by building this tower, whether it was the pyramids or it was some kind of a... Uh... Well, it, it may take them to heaven. <laughs> All right, caller, thank, thank you very much. Uh, wild Card Line, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hi, Art. Hi, Hello. Madman. Yes, hi. Uh, hi. Just real quick, if the Philadelphia experiment really did happen, you know the government picked up a lot of it. Oh, by the way, my name's Pete in Anchorage. Yes, Pete, Anchorage, Alaska. Okay. Uh, if they really did do the experiments, you know they gathered a lot of information. You wonder what they've been doing for the last 45, 50 years with that information. You betcha. Uh, the other thing... Uh, but without the- access to it, um, you know, even though it's, I know it sounds crazy, somehow Madman may be on the right track. That's what I'm thinking, too. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering, I used to work with high-voltage transformers in Connecticut, and when you put a heavy current to the to this copper and everything, it induces a large current field. What I'm wondering is, how is the rubber suit going to protect him from that? All right, it's it's a, a valid question. Oh, the, uh, as far as the magnetic field? Yeah, well, or, and the high-voltage, yeah. Uh, well, uh, 
like I said, if I use the if I use like the the tube, like the uh, more or less the tube within a tube deal. Yeah. Uh, basically, well, as long as that's arcing, and if, if as long as I don't touch it, I'll start it. As long as, as long as it's grounded, it's not going to arc to me. They stop and arc to me, especially when I, see when I go through this thing. I'm going to be I'm not going to be touching the ground. I'm going to be in midair. Midair. Yeah. Or, uh, in other words, you're going to have to almost jump through. Yeah. Well, all right. Hold on, Madman. We'll be right back with his new expanded plans. And actually, it's more than plans. Uh, Madman, about how far done toward the uh, what I'm calling Stargate? How far done are you? Uh, let's see. I got so far. I got two of the circles done. Uh, working on my third, and I got seven to do. Uh, other than that, let's see. The Transformers. Uh, all those are done. All done. Yeah. All heck, more or less. All I got is electromagnets, and then I got like a bunch of experiment to do. So we could be a month away from a call for the videotaping. Yeah. Everything goes out the talk as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Where are you, sir? I am in Lakewood, Ohio. All right. Okay. My uh, question has been previously addressed. I was just wondering if it is a door that you could travel through, and then once you get there, you could travel back, wouldn't something possibly come through just on coincidence? Yeah, that'd be a bad... You wouldn't want that. Like Pandora's box, pass, possibly? Yeah. No, yeah. like somebody from the outside sneak through back to here? Yeah, just on coincidence of the space where it opened. Or something. Worse like here, it, something could be going through that space where it opened. Oh, uh, yeah, that could be true. Like open right in, right in front of an airplane or something. Anything. Uh, God, that's an awful thought. Yeah. I mean, there could be something that we could, you know, that just could destroy the world. You so what would do you, do you urge him to uh, slow up and not do this? No, no, not at all. I mean, I just don't think it's possible because... Well, I mean, all right, all right. Let me rephrase the question. When Madman, when Michael, walks through mm -hmm. this, what do you think will happen? I really don't know because I think if time travel had been possible, we would uh, have evidence that someone in the future had been coming back. I mean... So you think he's going to... Well, maybe, no. That's another possibility. Maybe they can figure out how to go, like, go forward and come back from the point they left, but can't go backwards. So you think he's going to be charcoal? I don't know if anything's going to happen at all. Well, no, something will happen. Some... I just think if it had there been time travel possible, we'd have evidence. Oh, I look, I, you know, that's a defeatist kind of attitude, isn't it, Mavin? Uh, yeah. I mean... How are we to know until we try to just, uh, I, one thing's for damn sure, and that is, I would say, the only thing that won't happen is nothing. Something with three million volts and those rotating magnetic fields, sure as hell, something's going to happen. Uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Yes, Art, this is Sharon in Sacramento. Hi, Sharon. Um, hi. Uh, I have a real technical uh or limited technical awareness here, but uh, concerning the mental and biological concerns, I, I just wanted to mention that Preston Nichols in the fourth Montauk book right. uh, inadvertently discovered that titanium has shielding properties against detrimental frequencies, and I was thinking maybe he could wear a head shield of some sort under his rubber suit. Oh, I think he plans a head shield. Uh, well, well, I got one, but it's not made out of, tit it ain't made out of titanium. It's made out of sheet tin, but... Okay, well, it was the pre special properties of titanium that yeah. I think were, were important there. And uh, I think what you're doing is wonderful. Uh, I wish you the very best, and I believe that there's a lot of energy in our mental focus and would just suggest that as you, you move on through this that you focus your intention on experiencing the highest possibilities, not ignoring other possibilities, but that that, that intention needs to be real clear that way. Well, one thing's for sure. If he fries, we will memorialize him on this show, and we will be sure the videotape is uh, circulated as a great memorial to him, won't we, ma'am? Amen. Right. <laughs> Amen. That's a, that's a good way to end the call. Amen. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Where are you, please? Hi, this is Mark in Little Rock. Hello, Mark. How you doing? Okay. I'm Mad Mike. I wanted to say that um, a caller called in earlier and was trying to... Um, he asked the question, was association with time and travel? I think the answer to that could be that um, we only know about 
existence is life and existence is death. And I guess he's trying to figure out if is there anything else out there besides that or is there any distance in between. Well, you may be talking to the man who's going to find that out. Uh, and I just wanted to say, man, you got some... You got some guts, man. <laughs> I wish you the best. All right. All right, thanks. There you are. Uh, a lot of support, Matt, man. Are you surprised? Uh, I don't think quite a bit last time. That, uh, well, when I was on the show last time, the first call was like, well, basically, uh, some lady I saw I wrote, I was going right to Antarctica. I'm the one who wrote the Antarctica cookbook or something, but. Yeah, well, they know better than that now. But, I yeah. mean, there's a lot of support. I'm amazed. First time caller line, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hello? Hello. Yes, sir. Where are you? Uh, uh, Sacramento, California. All right. You're on the air. Um, well, a couple of things. I wanted to ask him why he was doing this. And um, <clears throat> the other thing is, is he planning to go... Back in time or forward in time? Well, he thinks forward. Yeah. Uh, let's deal with your first question. It really is a good one, Madman. Uh, why, why are you doing this? Uh, well, are you driven? Is it a compulsion? Uh, well, it's just something I discover and I'm seeing where I can take it. Uh, is it like something that... Now, I've seen your plans escalate from the little model to the big model... Now to the Stargate model, I'm going to call it. Yeah. And then there's going to be the Stargate model, hopefully, later on. Exactly. Big, so Big Stargate model. Exactly. Uh, well, this is big. Now, I think what you're doing now is gigantic. Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, also this, I'm working with uh, 3 million volts right now, but uh, hopefully, uh, if everything works out, I'll be playing with 80 million volts eventually. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, That's about how they'll get with, the current, with well, all of our current insulating materials we've got now. You may or may not even determine that that much voltage is needed. I mean, for all you know, you're using ten times what you're going to need. Well, it's like a... Well, one, one theoretical physicist said I need at least uh, four, at least 40 million, but I can write with... Basically, I'm on limited budget now, so I have to sell for three. But, I mean, you could, this could blow you right into the 25th century. Yeah. All right, uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with Madman Markham. Hello? Oh, hello. Yes, you're on the air, sir. Where are you? I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. All right. Um, with, you were talking about how to figure out ways to make sure it worked. Yes. And I'm thinking, get a cat, a radio transmitter, and... Why not a dog? Well, you know, anything really that'll, you know, dog, crash dog. it. Dogs make more noise, they bark a lot. I mean, yeah. <laughs> maybe you can okay. hear the dog on the other side barking or whining. No, what I meant was... A cat might just go to the other side and sit there like cats do, you know? Well, you get, like, two stopwatches, start them both at the same time, catch one of the cat, and a radio transmitter. I don't like this cat idea. Well, see, the idea is when you find the cat, if you find the cat, if it really works, the stopwatches will be different. Yeah, that would be true. Um, but, Madman, I really do recommend a dog. I mean, cats just, it's, for example, when you say to a cat, come, it doesn't come. No. So if the cat was on the other side, it might just sit there, or for all you know, it'd get on the other side and find a 